So good evening, everyone. Once again, this is Tasha M. Dyer to Trey Whisper. And I want to welcome each and every last one of you all to BYOB Market Talks. So as you're logging on, keep dropping it in the chat. Let us know where you're calling in from. This is definitely BYOB Worldwide. This is definitely BYOB Worldwide. And we're going to get started here this evening. But what we're doing this evening First and foremost, what we're doing is we're going to celebrate. You guys had a wonderful week. We got to experience our very first NFP trading day. We talked about it all week, and we had a very, very profitable day because normally it's on Friday. You know, we don't go live in the market on Fridays, but you guys flood the chat. And so I really think it was a great experience for us to trade that together because it was a very, very profitable week. It was a very, very profitable day. You know, when you understand what you're doing, you understand how to ride the wave of the market, you understand it's just exactly what you're doing, right? You, you just put yourself in that position of profit. So I'm excited. But where do we begin we be ah you couldn't wait to this call where do we begin we begin with our mindset so mindset is key and that's really what we focused on all week you know from getting up on the 5 a.m call the 9 a.m calls talking about the reports that were coming out everything that we had to do it was all about mindset okay and so that's where we always begin that is where we begin that is where we begin I am, I am a master trader. I am the signal. All my trades in in profit. So this is literally, okay, this is the largest economic empowerment movement in the history of mankind. So you own that. You know, I am 777. Make sure we don't leave that out. But I, you own that. You walk in that energy. You walk in that anointing. You walk in that manifestation. You walk into that. And you and so this is our economic emancipation month for our families. And so we've been talking about the tools. We had the triple effect last month in June. And so we talked about the tools. We talked about how to bring the tools back. But because of the triple effect, because of that, we did grow. We did grow because that's what the triple effect was supposed to do. We were supposed to grow. We were supposed to um, expand. And so I want to bring it back and kind of drop back down to the basics a little bit tonight. So we make sure everybody's on the same sheet of music. And it'll be a refresher for some of you all, but it'll also bring some of you all back up. You know, it'll be a refresher. But then it'll also bring some of you guys up to where you completely and totally understand. So, and uh, you probably hear that storm in the background too, because that was kind of loud. But so let's just go ahead and get started here this evening, right? Let's just go ahead and get started. So as we go through this, this is where we're going to begin, okay? This is where we're going to begin. First things first, where do we begin? We just talked about it, okay? We talked about your mindset, okay? We talked about your mindset. And with your mindset, you have to have, I mean, mentally. So there is no secret to anything that we do. There is no secret. So 5 a.m., 9 a.m., we do 40 calls a month, literally. 40 calls. So we talk about 5 a.m., 9 a.m. call. And this is Eastern Standard Time. And then after those calls happen, you know, then of course we have BYOB Market Talks, which you're on right now. And after BYOB Market Talks, immediately following this call, we have a talk with the finance doctor to help you understand the why behind the what. So you under, so what we're doing now is talking about the what to do, and then you get Dr. Bikewood that comes in, and he's going to help you understand the why you do it. You know, why are we doing what we do? And so very 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 important so you think about it that's our pipologist right so after this call you want to make sure you stay on the line you want to make sure you stay plugged in because mindset is key mindset is so important the understanding the questions that you can ask 
your personal development? Are you reading, right? What are you doing? Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So that is so, so, so important. If you don't expect to grow in your person, you, you have to expect to, to develop your mindset and it, you develop that. So even if, you know, for example, one of the books, Think and Grow Rich, right? That's, that's one of the books that we're always going to recommend that you read first. So if you're reading that book or you, re you start there, you think about what that will do for you in your life and even in your trade account. So your mindset is key. Now, then you're going to begin. So even when you're going through this, you have to go through your personal development. That's gonna help you because you're gonna see, we're gonna talk about your emotions. We talk about how you deal with the news. We, talk, we start this call with your affirmations. So you have to develop yourself. And then of course, you, you want wealth. We're talking about wealth, wealth creation. How many people have you known won the lottery and they didn't have anything a year later? So all of this is your development. So this is gonna help you master the charts. Now you begin in the academy. Right, we're gonna begin in the academy. In that academy, I am dot center. Now, in I am dot center, you want to go to FRX. Now, what I like about it, now of course that's where you start. Now you have other academies in there as well. You got your you got your high frequency forex, you got your digital currencies, you have all of that in I am dot center, but you want to start with your FRX. Okay, you want to start there. And you want to go through those, that series, you want to go through all of that, okay? That's where you want to begin. Now, with that, now there is a getting started video. We've dropped that in the Telegram. It's on the BYOB YouTube channel. And it's going to navigate exactly how you can become successful with the BYOB Cash Out. It's, it's, it's going to navigate. It's going to help you with that. So with that, how do you do that? You're gonna go to the BYOB Challenge YouTube channel. You're gonna go to the Getting Started playlist. There's a playlist, the Getting Started playlist. That initial Getting Started video is about five minutes long. And you don't wanna skip through that. You wanna pay close attention because that video navigates and it helps you understand how to take the technical, the practical, you know how to take what you're learning and apply it all at the same time. So that's gonna help you jump in the charts and become successful immediately. So you wanna make sure you go through that and do that. So because it's gonna help you get through that first 100 and 200 series, then it's gonna take you to trading the BYOB cash out playlist. There are several videos there, but that's that playlist. Then it's gonna take you, then you wanna go back to while you're trading and understanding, then you don't forget to go back to the three and 400 series. So don't forget about it because it's important. But a lot of your questions, a lot of that will be answered, but what it does is it helps you because you have that technical, you got that practical, you're reading, but then at the same time, you're really sitting there and you actually get to apply what you're learning and you're also on the calls. So when we tell you within your first 14 to 21 days that, you know, of course, past profits are, you know, past profits don't guarantee future success, but when we tell you that you can be a profit and you see testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony, the, the, it's proven, it's happened, it's done, right? It's happened, it's done. So follow the system, don't skip through the video. And you, this is about where we're going for understanding and you know, be coachable, follow this step by step by step. And so those videos are there. They're actually there for you to be successful. That's what they're there for. Now, risk management. Let's talk about this for just a moment. Let's talk about this. Everybody that does this, everybody that starts to trade, everybody that, that gets enrolled, we, we want the money, right? We, we want the wealth. You know, we, we're, how soon will I get my money back? Understand, you go to college, you start talking about going to college from the time you're a child and you enroll in college and you have no expectations and you're okay with it when you sit down signing for student loans, 
you have absolutely no expectation for getting a return on your investment for a minimum of four years, at a minimum. And I say a minimum because that's when you get your degree. You still don't have a job. You still don't have any, you're still looking for a job, probably maybe an intern, whatever it is. If you get a job in your field, because most people don't work in their field, especially right away. So you have all those factors and then you begin learning a skill set that's going to generate you some wealth. And in your first 30 days, you wonder why you're not wealthy. This is where you got to shift your mindset. And that's why we talked about personal development up front, because you have to focus on the skill set. That's why that first bullet right there says, forget the money. If you forget the money and you focus on the skill set, the money is going to come. So if you forget the money and you focus on the skill set, the money will come. But if you focus on the money, if you chase the dollar, then you'll never learn the skill set because you're so busy focused on the dollar. You want to focus on the skill set and then the money will come. That's how it works. And you have to keep your emotions in check. What does that mean? You gotta keep your emotions in check. You have to have emotional intelligence. We talked about that if you were on any of those calls, you know, if you were on any of those calls this week, we talked about your emotional intelligence. We really, really talked about your emotional intelligence because you do not move the market. Have you ever had a conversation? Remember how you do one thing is how you do everything. Have you ever had a conversation with someone that was irrational? Have you ever had a conversation with someone that was emotional? What can you get through to them? How can you, if you emotional and they're emotional, what's the outcome? Somebody has to remain in balance and in check because if you emotional and I'm emotional, we get nothing accomplished. No, we walk away without a solution. So you, we already know that exactly chaos. So we already know that the market, right? We don't move the market. We ride the wave of the market. And so this is why when we're sitting there, just like, of course, I want to get up. If I get up at five o'clock in the morning, you know, for some of you all, it's a different time. But if I get up at five o'clock in the morning, so that means that if I'm doing a call, I can't be laying in the bed on the call with you all that means i have to have gotten up gotten my coffee done all of those things so you think that i don't want to make some money with you guys too absolutely i want to i want to be in profit as well if i'm getting up at that time in the morning but what we're not going to do is is force anything the market has to the market is going to tell us what's happening we're going to ride the wave of the market and so if we're looking at the chart and if we're looking at it and the chart is saying that it's not moving, and that's why if you were on this morning's call, because, I, you know, and what happens is some of you all will send the private messages and some of you all will send, you know, and you'll ask for currency pairs. And I'm saying the market's not moving. The market's not moving. But we'll go check this one. We'll go check that one. We'll go check this one. Let's keep our emotions in check. We all want it. That goes back to the skill set and forgetting the money. We have to keep our emotions in check. We have to keep all of that in balance. Okay, we have to. And if you keep all of that in balance, if you keep that, I can guarantee you your trade account will thank you. Because we ride the wave. So if you understand, like we pointed out what was happening in the news, you understand your technical analysis, you understand the strategy. You understand the blue line cross over the red. You understand flat top, flat bottom. You understand piece or flip. That's the easy part, is understanding that you have the fundamental analysis that goes with it. It's understanding that I need to check my red folders. It's understanding that when I get a pullback, that I'm okay. It's understanding that I need to do my time frame confluence. It's understanding all of those things without getting emotional when I see that pullback. It's understanding that I need to put my indices in a separate account. It's understanding that it's not anything special that we do to trade indices. They work the same, they just are more impacted by fundamental analysis because of what they are, because of what they represent. That's all it is. And when you can keep your emotions in check, I've seen many of you grow and developing that 
because I recognize who's consistent on the calls. I recognize it. I recognize development. I recognize growth. And I recognize 777 in the check. So I see the growth. I see the development. And I see the transitions. And I can guarantee you I know what it is. It's that personal development and it's that emotional intelligence. That is what it is. Because when you have that, then you literally, you literally will be able to ride the wave and you'll be able to trade those indices. You'll be able to see how they move. You'll be able to do all of that. So <laughs> your emotions are on chill. I love it. So you learn a skill set and stay focused. So, and because that is why when I say we're right here on a 15 minute chart, but then I say go to the confluence, you know, check the confluence first, that should not confuse anyone. And you know, we don't use that word, but, but that should actually be easy for you to understand because if you're focused on the skill set and not the money. So that also helps you identify if you're focusing on the market, you're focusing on the skill set, or are you so busy trying to memorize? See, we've, we've grown up where we're so busy being taught to memorize things and not focused on an understanding. You, we have to operate in an understanding and not a memorization, right? This is where that transition is going to take place for you. When you understand it, the market talks, the light bulb comes, and you have your aha moment. And then you got a demo. Demo with the knowledge and the skill set. You got, you got to be okay with being in your demo account. You have to be okay with being in your demo account. You have to be okay with being in your demo account. You have to be okay with going back to your demo account. And what do I mean with going back to your demo account? I never traded indices before. I'm a beast on the Forex charts, but I never, tra I never, ever, ever traded demo before. I mean indices before. Guess what? I'm going to pull my demo account out and I'm gonna trade indices on my demo account. Because some of those questions that we get, you know how you tell on yourself? Well, my broker uses a 0 .01 and not a 1.0. Um, what, so, you know, that you tell them on yourself. That tells me you didn't demo it. That tells me you didn't get in there and see. Because you find all that out when you actually get in that market and you demo it. So that tells me you're just trying to jump in because you're chasing the money and not the skill set and the understanding. You're telling on yourself. So you want to, yes, they do, they move different. So even if you want to trade an exotic currency pair, right? Anytime you buy a car, you know, don't you test drive it? Anytime you purchase a car, don't you test drive it? So if you want to buy a different type of car, don't you test drive it first? Or do you just go pick it up and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to get it. So why wouldn't you if you're trading something you've never traded before, even if it's a different broker, you know, because you ask, well, what about this broker? When I demo with it first, because each broker is different as well. So, what, you know, just the same way, I might buy a Honda from one location, but I'm gonna buy a Honda from another location. Don't they handle transactions a little differently? It's still the same car, but they handle the transactions differently. So shouldn't I demo it first? Should not see what's going on. Should not understand how they operate. But instead of doing that, you ask the question because you're chasing the money and not the skill set and the understanding. So get in there, pull that demo account out. Make sure you jump in there. That's what, like I said, you can tell by the questions that you ask what you're looking for and how you're chasing it. You go to school for four years. I'm gonna keep telling you that. It's the mindset. It's the mindset. You invested in your legacy right now. You are investing in your future. You are investing in generations, right? This is why I always talk about economic empowerment, right? That's what this is. So if I'm investing in my future, I'm investing in my legacy. So my children will never have to want for anything. So I can empower them with the same skill set. So they can empower their generations. I think it's worth the investment to make sure that we do it right. Now, Let's talk about these different types of orders. Because now that you got your mindset right, now that you have your mindset right, some of the questions that were asked were about the orders. Because many of us, as you start advancing, we start teaching the strategy on the 15, right? We start teaching the strategy on the 15. 
And that's mainly like a market execution. Okay, that's always going to be a market execution. So when I'm when I'm when I'm on there, that's that's a market execution. So because it's like 10 pips and cash out. Because I for scalping, I want that volatility for scalping. I need that movement, right? I need that movement. I need that movement for scalping, but the strategy is not just for scalping. So as you develop that skill set, as you develop it, you can place different types of orders. You can place, you know, if you ever look, you look on your phone, you see that we do have different types of orders. So if I look at this, what I'm looking at is I see that I actually have what's called a buy stop and a sell stop. Now, I didn't make these names up and I'm sure um, Dr. Bifewood has the backstory behind it, but I didn't make these up but I wanna help you understand what they mean. Now, why they're named that, I can't help you with that, but I can help you understand what they mean. Now, what a buy stop is, is for example, the order is placed above price and price keeps going. So if you look at where this is, right? If I look at where this is, the order is placed above price. So, and we want price to keep going. So if we're looking right here, I want price to keep going through this, okay? I really want price to keep moving and I want price to keep going through there. That's what that means, okay? Uh, there it is, I want price to keep going. So a sell stop means, so a sell stop means I want price to be below here and I want it to keep going. So let's think about right here, let's say, I was in a range, pretend like this is a top, a resistance line, and this is a support line, right? Think about it from that perspective. Or if we were looking at that trend line earlier on one of those trades, right? We were looking at a trend line, and when it broke, I'm like, keep it, keep sticking. When it broke, when it breaks, it turns around and it pulls down. Now, I'm going to show you these on another screen, but I just want to, I'm painting a visual for you right now. Now, over here a limit, right? A limit. The order is placed below. So for a buy limit, the order is placed below price and then price is going to go up. So what does that mean? Think about that same range, okay? This would be the top and now this is at the bottom. So like, let's say we were in that range, for example. This is at the top and this is at that bottom. So let's say I'm thinking that the price is going to go down, but instead of it continuing to go down, because if it continued to go down, it'd be a stop. Now, if it goes down and then it turns around and it goes back up. So, but I don't want to enter the trade until I know that it comes down and it goes back up. And the sell limit is the same thing in the opposite direction. So I'm expecting this instead of once it reaches the top at this resistance point, I'm expecting for it to move up. I'm expecting for it to move up and then for it to turn around and it to come back down. That's what I'm expecting. So I'm expecting this to move up and then for it to come back down. That's what I'm expecting. And I'm like, I see you keep being stuck. I'm trying to show you where with the mouse. Now, this is, for example, the buy stop. So, yes, I am right now. Can I break it down a little bit more? Absolutely. So, a buy stop right here. So, we're talking about in a range, for example, right? We're talking about in a range. So, or you, you see like this might be a resistance line and you see how it's pushing right here, okay? You see how it's pushing right here. So what we're thinking, so you know when you're in a range or, and I'm using a range as an example, but when you're in a range, you know the market, so for, we might have some new individuals on the call. So the market, Drop, if you got a question, drop it in the chat. Just drop it in the chat and I'll answer it. So the market goes up, the market goes sideways, and the market goes down, right? The market goes up, it goes sideways, and it goes down. That's what the market does. So when it, like, let's say you see that this is going, this might be in a range. So a range is when it's going sideways. So while it's doing that, if the market is going sideways, right? And I'm thinking that it might come back down or it might finally break out of there, okay? I'm thinking it might break out of there. 
What a buy stop is, is I don't want to enter that trade until I know like this is a support and resistance line. This green line is a support resistance. So in this case, really it's resistance, right? We know it's resistance. So I don't want to enter that trade. I don't want to enter that trade. I'm trying to change this mouse. Give me a second because it's not. So I don't want to enter this trade until it reaches this point. Like I don't, and I needed to break past this line. Now, of course, we know how we always talk about even like with the piece are, right? Nothing, you don't do anything on that line. I don't do anything on a support line. I don't do anything on it. So right here is above it. So you, you enter a stop above because I have an expectation that it's actually going to break through and it's gonna go higher. That's what I have an expectation of, okay? That's what my expectation is. So with that, that's when I will place a stop order, okay? That's when I will place a stop order. So I have an expectation that it's gonna break through and it will push through and go higher. I mean, it's expected to move higher. On a stop, you see how it's going down. And so this would be like in that range as well. So you see how it's going down or, and I'm, and I'm not expecting it to go back up. I'm not expecting it to turn to stay within that range. I'm expecting it to break out of that range. I'm expecting it to come out of there. And when it comes out of there, right? When it comes out of there, which this is that support line, right? This is that support line. But when it comes out of that support line, it breaks through. So you see, this is where your sell stop would be. So your sell stop is actually below where you think it's gonna break out. So you believe it's gonna break out. So my sell stop is below. My buy stop is above, my sell stop is below. So that answer your question? And I'm gonna get into the limits also. So you need the limits? Because I'm doing the limits now. And you can, and just let me know what you need more clarity on. And I'll, I'll kind of break, so this one I'll kind of, I'll talk about those on there as well, but, but let me know what you need more clarity on. So if I'm looking at this, like this was that range, right? We were just talking about a range. So if I'm looking at this and this is that range, okay? I'm looking at this and this is that range. Okay, I'm looking at this and this is that range. So right in here, normally in that range is gonna go up, it's gonna come down. It's gonna go up, it's gonna come down. So I'm just kind of looking at this. So when you see this, this is where you will place a sale limit order. Because what happens is you see you got your resistance line and you see you got your support line, okay? You got your resistance line and you have your support line. And this is that range where the market is moving sideways. So what will happen is that limit, that sell limit, is you have an expectation that the market is going to go up. But then I have that expectation that the market is also going to turn and come back down. So you see it came up, but it's coming back down. So it's going up, but I don't expect it to break out of here and keep going, right? I do not expect that it's going to break out of there and keep going. Uh, can you guys? All right. So... So it's gonna so a sale limit is I have an expectation. No, this the the orders have absolutely nothing to do with strategy. The orders have nothing to do with strategy. Absolutely nothing to do with a strategy. And a buy stop or a sell stop is when you start to buy or to sell, or it stop. No, it starts. It starts. That's why I said try not to think about what it's called right try not to think about what it's called so because you're right because if you think about it so I'll, I'll show you on here as well so 
when you look at it, right, when you look at it, I'm looking at the fact that this sell stop, I mean, the sell limit, it goes, so like, look at this trade. This trade is moving up, but a limit means I, it's going to go up and I'm expecting it to turn around and come back down. That's what I'm expecting. It went up and I'm expecting it to turn around and come back down. So a limit means I'm expecting it to come down and I'm expecting it to turn around and come back up. So, and what a stop is gonna do, a stop literally is going to, like let's say right here, I'm, I would literally do a buy stop somewhere up here, like if I expected it to break out of this range. So if it breaks through the limit the wrong way, it doesn't enter. Correct, it won't trigger it. So like, let's say if you have a buy stop up here because you thought that it was going to keep going and not turn around and come back down like it did. You thought it was gonna keep going and I had a buy stop up here. Then guess what? Then it would never have entered that trade. It would never have entered that trade. So you would, it would never have triggered. And so even for right here, like this sell limit, like right here you see where it's pulling down it would never have entered that trade it would never so if it would if this would have broke through this resistance line and kept going it would never have entered that trade so let me see if i can actually let me see something i'm gonna stop my share really quick now let me see if i could actually do this give me a second let me try to transition this to a chart for you guys, right? I'm going to pull my screen share back up in just a minute, and I'm going to try to transition. Now, while I'm doing this, as if it's your first time on the call this evening, your first time on a, or your first time with us this evening on a, Market talks, uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. Your first time with us this evening on a market talks. Let me get a one, one, one in the chat if this is your first time with us this evening. And let me get a one, one, one. And for my people that are still, my individuals that are still learning how to cash out, let me get a two, two, two. <laughs> Okay, so I'm about to try to get this screen share back up here for you guys on the actual chart. And now what you're going to see is that, like we talked about, the market has definitely slowed down because it's a holiday now, right? And the U.S. holiday definitely impacts that. The U.S. holiday definitely impacts that. So let's talk about this for just a moment. So we're not going to have one that really played out. The market will literally be crawling right now. And it's going to be crawling, right? It's going to be crawling because this will be helpful for PIP reaction. Well, I mean, of course. But you want to understand, right? You really want to understand because in your understanding of this, you know, you, you got to understand how the market moves before you start trying to put this in there. You really got to understand how the market moves. And I don't want you coming in here trying to drop a sales stop and you still haven't learned how the PSAR is going to flip and you know, so, but I'm just trying to help you understand what those orders mean right now. So let me see if I got a range on this one. I know which one has one. AUD. Hold on. Well, I know it's AUD. I think it's CAD. So like AUD CAD is in a range right now. I was looking at that one earlier. So this is a good one that's in a range, right? You can kind of see this one is in a range right now, right? 
So that kind of looks like that picture we were just talking about, right? So if I'm looking at this, and I'm going to get rid of the stochastic just for right now. If I'm looking at this, and like this really looks like what we were looking at, and I'm going to just draw a support and resistance line on here. And you're trying to look at how can I possibly trade this, right? How can I possibly look at this and I trade this? This is where your limits come in handy, right? This is a good place for limits. So that's what I mean. And that's why I said, you know, maybe Dr. B can give us the backstory on that, you know, but as far as the backstory, I don't have the backstory. But even when I was testing, you know, and getting my investment license and everything, that's in there. But at the same time, is you trying to understand why, we're gonna shift that word, we're not confused, we need more clarity, right? Everything is mindset, everything is mindset. And that's why I wanted to talk about this tonight because we go from market execution, right? And this is what, if you say we go from market execution to now what? Because you wanna, you wanna be able to set trades and walk away from them. But if we use the word confusing, then we tense up because it puts us in a state of, I don't get it. I don't understand. But if you begin to operate with, you know, you begin to operate, right? And so that's going to shift your mindset. So that's really going to shift your mindset. So let's walk in that energy of clarity. But I do understand where you're coming from because when I was initially, you know, I really, really get it. Because when I was initially learning this, it's like you're trying to remember the stop, the limit, the stop, the limit, the limit, the stop, which one is it? How do I do this? You know, is it, you know, so I get it. Trust me, I get it, you know. And that's why I really wanted to break this down for you all this evening so you can really have clarity and understanding of what this means. So just to really, really break this down. So if I'm looking at the range, right? If I'm looking at the range, so what you see in this range, okay? What you see in this range is you see how the market was going up, it's coming down, it's going up, it's coming down, it's going up. Now it's not gonna stay in there forever, right? You know it's not gonna stay in there forever. So the limits, you know, I don't know how you got to think about it. I don't know what, how you can apply, but maybe it's reached its limit and it's got to turn around. You know, I don't, I don't know. So, but when you look at it and you think about it, when it gets to this point up here, when it gets to this point up here at this resistance line, okay, when it gets to this resistance line, let's put our line chart and let's adjust this just a little bit because I just threw it on there. It's pretty much in a good spot. It just wigged out pretty hard. So when it gets to this point right here, okay, what you're looking at is you don't know, right? We took the stochastic off intentionally, but it's been in a range. So it's like, okay, what is the market going to do? Because we know it can't stay in a range forever. We know it has to come out of the range, right? You know it has to come out of the range, but you don't know when. Right, we know we can follow it, but so right here, so I know that it's gone up and it's come back down. It's gone up and it's come back down. So I have a belief that when it gets right here, that it's gonna come back down, right? I got a belief that it's gonna come back down. This is where I put my limit. So maybe you could think about it like it's reached its limit or maybe it hasn't reached its limit. So, you know, I play with words and that's that the little things that jog your memory, you know? So, and you know, if I look at this, you can come down here somewhere and you know, let me change this color and you can begin to think about it and maybe not that color. You can begin to think about it like, okay, well, what can I do to, what can I do to really um put my what can i do to really like i would want to place a limit somewhere down here because i don't want to just get in a trade i don't want to take a sale when it's not selling but if it's i don't know if it's going to turn around yet like i don't know now of course you can apply to be while we cash out of course you know we can definitely apply to be while we cash out but you know for the sake of the true understanding 
you know, a limit is you have an expectation that it's going to go up and then it's going to come, it's going to come back down. Like it will not keep going, right? It will not keep going. Now, if I'm looking at, so that's what that, that's what a sell limit would do. So you set a sell limit somewhere down here. Okay. And then that buy limit would have been the same thing. You would have set a buy limit somewhere in here because you had that expectation that this comes down and then it turns around and it goes back up. So you would have set a buy limit because we would not have wanted to start a buy here. What if it kept going? What if this kept going? So this, what, this is what your limits are, right? This is what your limits are. This is what your limits are, right? Now, what you want to come over here. So like, let's say it's right here. Maybe I believe it's going to keep buying, right? Maybe it's going to keep buying. Now, what I said it right here, absolutely not. Now, this is where a buy stop. Yes, a stop is the entry point, right? The stop is the entry point for it to keep going. Uh, think about it like what helped me was I thought about it like, okay, when I get to a stop sign, you know, when I actually get to a stop sign, at that stop sign, I'm going to keep going, right? When I get to a stop sign, then I know at that stop sign, you come to a stop, then you keep going, right? So that's what helped me navigate the two, right? When I was learning this. So when I get to this stop sign, now what I put it in here, where I know it's been wicking out and I know it's been wicking out and I know it's been wicking out and I know it's been wicking out, no. But what made me understand the difference, like I said, when I was learning this, I would have said this up here somewhere where I know, cause I would have looked to my left and I would have said a buy stop up here somewhere. Of course, we will apply to BYOB cash out. We will apply to BYOB cash out, of course. But I'm, you know, you see, I'm just showing you what they are right now, right? I'm just trying to show you what they are right now. So if I had an expectation that this was going to go up and keep going up, right? That this was going to keep going up, you know, like this was going to keep moving up. If I had that expectation, matter of fact, maybe I should just get an arrow, the other arrow. Like this was going to keep going up. Like that's what that picture did, right? So I have an expectation it's going to keep going up. I will not enter that trade until it gets here. And so what helped me remember the difference between a stop and a limit is I treated this like a stop sign. So when you're driving your car, okay, when you're driving your car, what do you hit? What do you come to, right? You get to a stop sign. And when you get to that stop sign, they don't have one in here. When you get to your stop sign, they got a house, but no... But when you get to your stop sign, okay, I put a caution sign. Just when you get to your stop sign, your road sign, you're going to stop and then keep going. Because at a stop sign, you don't turn around, you keep going. So that's how it made me remember a buy stop and a sell stop meant keep going. So that, that you know, those little things like that, like I play with words. So just a little tool, something for your tool bag, you know, that might help you remember the difference in the two. Something for your tool bag. So, and the limit, a sell limit is when we will enter a sale when it happens to go, happen when it goes into a sale limit and then it goes back down. Right, so a limit means it'll go up and then it's like, it's like it's making a U-turn. You know what I mean? It's like it's making a U-turn. So it'll go up, and it's turning back down. That's why, you know, that helped me with the stop because this is like a U-turn. And this one, a limit makes a U-turn and this one goes up and it gets to the stop sign and then it keeps going. So if it's a buy stop, I cut, I get to the stop sign, right? To where I have no expectation of it to turn prop, turn around. And then of course, so, do you say, absolutely. You always said to take profit in a, you always, 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 always set a take profit always 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 set a take profit always now now we didn't um do any analyzation on this i just wanted to show you you know i just really wanted to show you you know what it what it what it was
So this was, this was just to show you those executions because we've been doing market execution. So this was just to show you, right? That's what that was. That's what that was. And then, so here, when you look at it, when you, so the trade wouldn't play out if it never hits the point you said it, correct. It would never execute. So if I set a buy stop right here, if I set a buy stop right here and it, and it turned around and it came back down, it would never, it would never activate. It would never activate. It would be a pending order on your trade account. It would be a pending order. It would be a pending order. It would never activate. Right? So just like if you did a limit right here and it kept going and it never came back down, if you did a limit, it would never activate. So you see a lot of people with these, like this morning, one of the questions was, could we set a sell stop, right? And my answer was, it's NFP, it's a lot of news. And if you haven't done it before, then you don't start on NFP, right? You don't start today. You don't start right now. You wanna make sure that you understand where you're doing it, because where would you set it? Are you setting it with an anticipation of this pullback? Because what do we know? The market always pulls back and it retests that trend line. So this one actually came down and hit, and then before it pulled back at all. And then it started coming back down. So where do you set your sales stop? Where are you gonna put it? This is where you have to, as you begin to understand the market, you know, as you begin trading, so as you begin trading, that's when you, when you would do it. So if you set a, if you hit market, oh, at, correct. If you are market execution, right? When you know when you open up your MetaTrader 4, when you open your MetaTrader 4, you're gonna have five different orders that you can do. The, the one, default one is market execution. You have five different orders that you can take. You can take a market execution, you can take a buy or sell stop or a buy or sell limit. Those are five different orders that you could take. And you really just have to know which ones you want to take. And that's what this is. It helps you understand the orders that you want to take. That's, that's what this is. So, and this is really, this is what's going to help you understand the different types of orders that you can take. And so then you'll see people that's waiting on these pullbacks to finish right? So they're not sitting at the computer. You'll set, you can set a buy stop below here, right? I mean, a sell stop, not a buy stop. We're not buying here because that's obviously a sell. So as you navigate and you and advancing in your skill set, because I need you to understand what you're doing, let me, please, please, please understand what you're doing. Understand what you're doing. Understand what you're doing, right? Understand what you're doing when you do it, but you want to Cause I want, and before you, and once again, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Before you ever do it, where you need to do it first. Cause I've never done it before. Where do I need to do it first? In my demo account. Go back to your demo account. Do it in your demo account. Exactly. Do it in your demo account. So, and that'll help you understand how far below, how the currency pairs move. Because I can promise you, a trail, even something as simple like we've talked about trailing stop losses before, right? A trailing stop loss on a GBP pair is not the same as a trailing stop loss on an AUD pair. Even though this GBP AUD is still just not the same. GBP has so much more liquidity in the market. So a GBP, the pullback might be, there might be a 50, 60 pip pullback, but that's not going to be like that on an AUD. So how I do a trailing stop loss on a GBP pair might be a little bit different than how I do, you know, on one that's more dominant, you know, or maybe a USD or maybe another one. So how do I know that without getting stopped out of the trade or kicked out of my trade real quick? How do I know that? I go back to my demo account, right? Because that's how I'm going to learn it. That's where your trial and error is, right? That's where it's at. So... But yeah, you can put that, you will put one down here. If you like, when I say wait on that pullback before you will come back and enter the trade because you begin to hear the market and you begin to understand the market and the market begins to talk to you, then 
you know that you can come down here and you can actually do it or you can actually set one for this to trade but how do i know where to put it you know because you are the signal you are that master trader you drop it you, you do it in that demo account first so any questions comments questions comments testimonies questions drop it in the chat questions comments testimonies Oh, thank you. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to kind of add to, so you can kind of put in your mind at some point how this would be applicable. So when you have an opportunity to understand going from the different trading sessions, Sydney, Tokyo, London, and you do your analysis, this gives you the opportunity to always look left. And then for those of you who have, you know, cumbersome schedules, this is how you can do your pre-charting and predestination on utilizing the strategy. But this also allows you to not have to physically be in front of your computer. And the benefit of this is when you use the buy stop, anticipating that your entry point is going to excel past a particular point. If it is that moment where the market corrects itself or does not hit that point, then you're not that that trade does not initiate. And that's the most important thing that you need to be able to take away from this conversation. The buy stop, sell stop, these are things that if uh, the market doesn't move, anticipating the way it is, obviously when the technical analysis sound, and then we had that disruption as far as the fundamental, this is how you, you know, this is another layer of risk management as you become more in tune with understanding complete and total market structure. So that's the purpose of understanding the different type of orders. So just put a mental picture in your mind. If you're not sitting there and you've been accustomed to market execution and if you want to, you know, chart out. And this actually helps you distinguish your trading style when you become you know, more of an intraday trader or, or a swing trader. This allows you to start looking at the higher time frames and you go from now really understanding the zones and things of that nature. So this is the benefit of understanding how to properly input these trades. And these some things that you can see market movement and these trades may end up paying out two or three days later, but you still get the benefit if your time schedule does not prevent you to be there. So this is just another added value from understanding. So obviously we wanted to slow it down this evening and now be able to help you understand as you become more effective and efficient when we say that market is 24 hours, five days a week as far as foreign exchange market and the cryptocurrency, this is how you're able to capitalize on the market while you're sleeping. And when you wake up, this allows you to be in profit as well. So I want to add that commentary. Amen, amen. It, I love it. I like that when you're sleeping and you wake up in profit. I like that part. I really like that part because it does. So, um, so, I mean, but just just to really add, I mean, you think about this week. You think about, I mean, even this morning, there were nine trades, right? There were nine trades that we looked at this morning because of the liquidity in the market. So look at how this would have been beneficial for you to understand. So that's really why I wanted to kind of dive back a little bit and talk about mindset and then talk about the type of executions that we have because you this might not like i think dr bifewood said it best this morning about it might not have been you know wherever you are it could have been your day one with byob and in your day one of nfp but it might not you know but guess what there are 12 in a year right there are 12 and then there will be 12 next year so it's even but guess what they're trading opportunities next week and it's all about the understanding because we talked about we talked about the news we talked about all of those things we talked about following the market and i told you guys how profitable today can be for you but because you understood because you paid attention all those seven seven sevens in the chat all those seven seven sevens in the chat so 
you definitely, 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 right? You definitely, definitely, definitely put yourself in profit, right? You definitely did. So I'm excited for you guys. So with that being said, right, live to trade another day. No, awesome. So you definitely will be 